Greetings and welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will discuss a very simple converter, which is the buck converter. And we will see how we can determine the load current, load voltage, and also the ripple current in the output. Of course, we will see that step by step in our calculations and also verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Now, this circuit is the very general, generic circuit of a buck converter. In a very simple case, you see here the DC input voltage. We have a switch here, it is ideal. We have the diode, the inductor and the capacitor, and our load here in pure resistor form. The VO is our output voltage and the IO is our output current. We know that the VS is 40 volt and we have a switching of 20 kilo, so the switching frequency is 20 kilo. That means this switch will be then switched by a frequency of 20 kilohertz. We have an L and the C. The resistor is 25 ohms. The D here is our duty cycle, so it has now in this case 60% or 0.6. Now using these values, we like to calculate these parameters or unknowns here. So the average output voltage, which is in this case DC output voltage, the average or DC output current the maximum and the minimum inductor current and the peak to peak output ripple voltage. Now, before we move on with the calculations, let's first look at the waveforms. This is the inductor voltage. We see here the first part, which is the where we have the switch closed. And if the switch is closed, then we have Vs is equal to Vl, so voltage across the inductor plus the voltage at the output. And that is then Vs minus Vo for the inductor voltage only. When the switch is opened, then this diode will be conducting, but then you have the voltage across the inductor will be then the minus of the voltage across the load. So then we have the minus VO. And then the sequence will repeat each other uh, itself in this similar fashion. The inductor current is given by this ripple configuration. You see also the in the middle uh, that the average load current, which is inductor current. The capacitor will be then shifted down by this average current and you see actually that it is then here at zero and then going up and down, up and down in the similar fashion as the inductor current but then shifted down as set by the average load current. Okay, now let's move on with the calculations. We have the average output voltage or the DC output voltage that is given by this expression. Output voltage is equal to the duty cycle times the input DC voltage, in this case we get then 24 volts. The average output current is given by this expression using Ohm's law because we know the output voltage, so it is just 24 over 25 will be then 960 milliamps. The maximum and the minimum inductor current are given by the following expression. Before we move on, we need to first determine the average inductor current, which is as said before is equal to the average output current. So that means IL average uh, inductor current will be then IO average output current. So also 960 milliamps. The peak peak inductor current is given by this expression. You see here the duty cycle and also the switching frequency and also the inductor value itself. And that will give us 48 milliamps. Now the maximum inductor current can then be calculated using the average and the peak peak inductor current. Now the maximum inductor current will be then the average plus the peak peak inductor current divided by 2. So you get actually now 984 milliamps and the minimum inductor current will be then calculated using this one instead of a plus you see a minus here and it will be then 936 milliamps. So the peak peak here the difference will be then 48 milliamps. Peak peak output ripple voltage is given by this expression and that will be then 3 millivolts. And you see here that it is dependent on the value of the capacitor, inductor and the switching frequency and also the duty cycle and output voltage. Okay, let's now collect everything we have calculated and look at the simulations. The first one we depict here the Simlink circuit we have used. So these are the Simscape elements. You see the inductor, the capacitor and the resistor and also our DC voltage source of 40 volts. This pulse generator will then create PWM signal, which has a duty cycle of 60% or 0.6. And that will be then applied to this ideal switch. And that will be then create this output voltage and output current, etc. 
and there will be also recorded here the scope so I will now go to the display at the scope in the next slide this is the inductor cur voltage inductor current output voltage uh, resistor current also the output current and also the capacitor current you see here that it needs some transient time to settle down and at some point let's you see is for the green part which is the inductor current it's the same as the induct the resistor current and it is almost 0.96 or maybe one ampere and it's actually close to what we wanted and what we have calculated you see also the output voltage is in the yellow which is then in between the 20 and the 30 and that is here very close to 24 so also what we have calculated so we can say this is check for those parts but in order to also check the other values we need to go zoom in so let's then also look at the zoom in version of the inductor voltage first so we have zoomed in here you see actually here the square wave uh, waveform of our inductor voltage as we have hit here and what you see here is that the label 1 and label 2 give you here the values which is for the, the this part which is the maximum is 16 which is correct because it will be then 40 minus 24 so that will be then 16 volts and what we have here at label 2 which is the minimum is minus 24 because that is the minus of the output voltage. going on to the next one which is the inductor current that is the green one you see the peak peak value the label 1 will give you 984 or 85 milliamps approximately maximum which is really close to what we have calculated and label 2 which is the minimum is will give you 930 seven or millivolt a little bit low, smaller than that one also very close to what we have calculated so this is also checked the final one is our output voltage and again zoomed in that is the yellow one and you see here that the maximum and the minimum the peak peak value is given here as 3.21 approximately millivolts we have calculated three millivolts so that is also very close to what we have calculated so we can say this is also checked if you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video.